Hi friends, uh, today I am going to make a video on coordinate geometry which is one of the chapters in your mathematics coordinate geometry or it is also called as elementary uh, analytical geometry analytical geometry on this I am going to make some videos uh, now <clears throat> in this chapter you have three things one is you have to know distance formula second is the section formula and the third is how to find the area of a triangle right now you know that to locate a point to locate a point we require two reference lines two reference lines which are called the axis this is called the x axis and the vertical axis is called as the y axis where they intersect each other that is called the origin o is origin o is origin and it is taken to be 0 0 0 0 its coordinates are taken to be 0 0 and the points any point is located from this particular point called the origin now this portion this part is called the first quadrant first quadrant this is called the second quadrant this part is called the second quadrant this is called the third quadrant this is called the fourth quadrant right suppose there is a point here to reach this point starting from here starting from origin to reach that particular point some point a b c something I have to travel like this I have to travel like this up to here and then I have to travel like this from here it will be here and then up like that now any movement to the right of y axis is taken to be positive and the movement from the y axis to the left of y axis is taken as negative and similarly the movement above x axis is taken as positive and below x axis is taken as negative you are familiar with all these things now if a point is here we say its coordinates are x y x y that is what we mean by that is from here i have to travel up to here this is x units it may be x mm x centimeters x meters whatever it is now this from here to here this vertical distance from the x axis this is this distance is y that is the meaning of telling that this is x y now if a point is in first quadrant both x and y coordinates are positive both the coordinates are positive because we have to move to the right and to the up if it is in the second quadrant here then we are moving this way that is to the left of y axis so x coordinate will be negative and y coordinate will be positive because y coordinate i am moving upwards here i am moving left then i am moving upwards if it is in third quadrant here i have to travel like this and then come down like this so here it is left and down so both x and y coordinates will be negative if it is in fourth quadrant somewhere here x is positive and y is negative i have to travel to the right then down so x is positive and y is negative so this you know uh, <coughs> these things fundamental things you already know them you have studied them in the lower classes now what we are going to study start here study here is suppose we have two points two points known to us there are two points known to us one is they can be anywhere they can be in any quadrant it doesn't matter say one point is here one point a is here and another point b is somewhere here 
Now, if I join these two points, it will be a straight line. This AB is a straight line. Now, I let me say this is x1, y1 and this is x2, y2. One of them is x1, y1 and the other one is x2, y2. Now, I want to know what is the distance between A and B. The shortest distance is the length of the line. The straight distance is the shortest distance. I want to know what is the, how to find out this AB, the length of the line AB. Now, this will be equal to square root of, this can be proved geometrically that it is equal to square root of x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. Now, this is called as the distance formula. This we call it as the distance formula. It can be proved. We can mathematically, geometrically prove it. Suppose I take these points. These points can be anywhere. Suppose I take two points here. One is x1, y1. This is x1, y1. Anyone can be taken as x1, y1. And the other point is here. This is b, x2, y2. Now, the meaning of telling this is x1, y1 and this is x2, y2 is if I draw perpendiculars here and a perpendicular here. Now, from here to here it is x1. From here to here it is y1. From here to here it is x2 and from here to here it is y2. So, you can see here this is x1. From here to here it is x1. This is x2. x2. So, this distance, this distance will be, if I draw a perpendicular here also, this distance will be x2 minus x1. Similarly, this distance is y1 and this is y2. So, this will be y1, y2 minus y1, y2 minus y1. Now, this is a right angle triangle ABC. If I take this as A, this as B, this is C. ABC is a right angle triangle in which AB is a the hypotenuse. So, square on the hypotenuse will be equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. That's how I can prove it. I think you are, you don't require the proof. What you require to know, know is you have to remember this formula. This formula is called the distance formula. And you using this formula, you should be able to solve problems. This formula is called as the distance formula. Now, you have to remember that. Now, how to remember that? You do 10 problems. If you do 10 problems, write the formula 10 times, then you will automatically uh, remember it. It will come to you by heart. Now here, the simplest of the problem will be like this. Find, find the distance. Find the distance between, between the points, between the points. A, 3, 2 and B, 2, 1. This is a very simple problem, straight problem with no this thing. Now, you take any one of them as x1, y1. You can take any one as x1, y1 and the other will be x2, y2. The common mistake the students make is that they will take here x1, x2, y1, y2. That should not be done. One is one of them is x1, y1 and the other one is x2, y2. You can take either this as x1, y1 or that as x1, y1. Then if you take that as x1, y1, this will become x2, y2. Now, whether you take this one as x1, y1 or that one as x1, y1, the answer will be the same. So, you need not bother about it. Any one can be taken as x1, y1 and the other will be x2, y2. Now, the you write the formula. AB is equal to square root of x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. Now, I have taken here x2 is for me. Now, you make a substitution. x2 for me is 2. Right? And the x1 is 3. So, 2 minus 3 the whole square plus y2 is 1 minus y1 is 2. Right? I have taken it like that. So, 2 minus 3 the whole square 
plus 1 minus 2 the whole square. 2 minus 3 will be minus 1. Minus 1 the whole square. Plus this is also minus 1. This is also minus 1. When you are adding two, two numbers of different sign, one is plus and the other one is minus, the total will be the sign of the bigger number and the answer will be, the number will be the difference between the two. So this you know. So it is minus 1 square plus minus 1 square. That is one minus 1 square is 1 plus 1 because minus 1 into minus 1 will give you plus 1 plus this is also minus 1 the whole square means 1 so this will be root 2 so this is the answer you there is no square root for 2 so you can leave it like that you need not find the root of 2 you write the di distance between these two points is 2 now this is the simplest Simplest problem that you can get. Then one more. Second one. This is also a direct problem. I am taking a direct problem. I am taking a few direct problems. So that you understand it easily. He says find the distance between the origin and point A. Find the distance between find the distance between between origin origin means I have told you and point A which is given as 2 3 point A that is 2 3 so here is origin one point is there A here it is, its uh, coordinates are 2, 3, this point he calls as O. Now, so the two points here are, one point is 0, 0, that is the origin, and the other part, point is 2, 3. So you take one of them as x1, y1, this is 0, this is A, the other one will be x2, y2. Now again, OA now, OA is the distance we want, that will be, x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. Make a substitution here. x2 is 2, 2 minus 0 the whole square plus y2 is 3, 3 minus 0 the whole square. That is root of 2 square plus 3 square. That is root of 2, is, square of 2 is 4 square of 3 is 9 so it will be root of 13 you are getting a number which is not a perfect square don't worry you leave it like that that is the distance OA will be root 13 next little harder now application applying this formula little more this thing in this problem see here Show that the points, show that the points, show that the points seven nine seven nine three seven three seven and minus three three minus three three or the coordinates or the vertices of a right angle triangle or the vertices or vertices of a right angle triangle that is they are the corners of a right angle triangle right angle triangle <coughs> we have to prove that you know there is a property of right angle triangle that is in, a, in any right angle triangle the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. Now I will call that triangle as PQR, any name you can give. Now let us see this is P, this is Q, this is R, I take it like that. Now first I will find out the length of PQ. The formula is same. 
x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. This is the formula for finding the length of PQ. One of them I will take. One of them I will take as x1, y1 and the other one will be taken as x2, y2. So x2, if I have taken this as x2, y2, 3 minus 7 the whole square plus 7 minus 9 the whole square. 3 minus 7 the whole square, 7 minus 9 the whole square. This will be square root of 3 minus 7 is minus 4 the whole square plus this is minus 2 the whole square. So that will be 16 plus 4. 4 square is 16. They become positive because when you square minus 4 into minus 4 is plus 16, minus 2 into minus 2 is plus 4. So this is root of 20. We got PQ as root of 20. Next, I will find out QR. QR, that is these two points now. Now, again the formula is same. You can write the formula a number of times. Now, this is x2. Anyone can be taken. This is x2, this is x1. Anything can be taken. Minus 3, minus 3, the whole square. Minus 3, minus 3, the whole square. Plus 3, minus 7, the whole square. 3, minus 7, the whole square. That will be minus 3, minus 3. If you add, it will be minus 6. Minus 6, the whole square. Plus 3, minus 7 is minus 4, the whole square. Now, that will be 36 plus 4 square is 16. 6 square is 36. 4 square is 16. 36 plus 16. This is root of root of 36 plus 16. 52. 52. Root 52. Next, R P R P R. Again, the formula is same. I will take like this, PR, minus 3 minus 7, minus 3 minus 7 the whole square, plus 3 minus 9, 3 minus 9 the whole square, this is, this will be equal to minus 10 square minus 10 square plus 3 minus 9 is minus 6 minus 6 the whole square that is equal to 100 plus 6 square is 36 now that will be 136 now i am not getting the required answer i think i have taken this point wrongly this should have been minus 7 i think if that was minus 7, 3 minus 7, minus 7 minus 9, this would have been minus 16. Then 16 plus, this would have been 256, 256, 262, 272 it will be, 272. Now here also, if this was minus 7, uh, minus 3, minus 3, 3, it would have become plus 7, plus 7. Then it would have been 6 square. This would have been 10 square. This would have been 100, 100, and this would be 136. See, 1 plus 1 minus, if I take, it will be dif different. Now you see here PQ is I am getting root of 272. So therefore PQ square is 272. Square on PQ will be 272. I am getting QR as root of uh, 136. Therefore QR square will be equal to 136 
I am getting P R as again root one thirty six. Therefore, uh, P R square is equal to one thirty six. See the total of these two Q R square plus P R square for Q R square plus P R square is equal to P Q square. That is, this is the hypotenuse. These are the other two sides. So this is proved that these three points form a right angle triangle. They are the vertices of a right angle triangle like that. Now, this I had not worn the specs. That's why I think I made a mistake there. <coughs> <coughs> We'll do one more problem. Let us see. Show that the points. Show that the points. The points. Two five, two five, comma four six, and eight eight, or collinear means they lie in the same straight line. They lie in the same straight line. You can call it by any any name, L, M, and N. Now, if three points lie in a straight line, lie in a straight line. If this distance plus this distance will be equal to this distance, right? This distance plus this distance will be equal to this distance, total distance. So, what I have to do now to show that they are collinear or they lie in a same straight line is. Find out the distances. Find out L M. L M is equal to root of same thing again. X two minus X one the whole square plus Y two minus Y one the whole square. So make a substitution. Root of X two. I'll take this as X two. Four minus two. Four minus two the whole square plus six minus five. Six minus five, the whole square. Four minus two is two, so two square plus one square. Six minus five is one, so root of four plus one, that is root five. This is root five. L M is root five. Next, I'll take up M N. The formula remains the same. Now I take this as x two y two, this as x one y one. So root of substituting eight minus four the whole square, eight minus four the whole square plus eight minus six the whole square, eight minus six the whole square. So now eight minus four is four, four square plus eight minus six is two, two square. So four square is sixteen plus two square is four. That is root of twenty. Then N L or L N, whatever it is, N L. This first and last point. Again, the formula remains the same. You can write it again and again repeatedly so that you get by heart. Eight minus two. That is, I have taken this as x two y two, this as x one y one, plus eight minus five the whole square. Square root of eight minus two is six. Uh, six square plus eight minus five is three square. So this is root of thirty-six plus nine. That is forty-five. Root of forty-five. Now this you cannot further simplify. Let it be like that. Now this can be written as twenty can be written as uh, sorry four into five, right? 
20 can be written as it is the product of 4 and 5. Now this 4 can be taken outside. If I take out that 4, it will be 2 root 5. Here, this can be written as 45 can be written as the product of 9 and 5. 9 5s are 45. So 9 root of square and uh, root of 9 is 3. So it will be 3 root 5. So now this is only root 5. That means it is 1 root 5. Lm. So Lm is root 5 plus Mn will be root 5 plus 2 root 5. That will be 3 root 5. The sum of these two will be 3 root 5 which is same as Ln or Nl. Nl or Nl. Nl. Therefore, you can say that these three points are collinear, the given points. Therefore, the given points are collinear because Lm plus Mn is equal to the length of Lm and Mn is equal to Nl. We can say that they are the what uh, they are collinear. Now this problem can be solved again when we are doing uh, area of triangle. See if a three points are not collinear, if they are not in this straight line, what happens is they will form a triangle. They will form a triangle. There will be area. That triangle will have some area. Now if you show that the area formed by these three points is zero, then also we can say that these three points are collinear. That is another way of showing it. You can do it in any manner you want. You can do it by distance formula or by area of triangle formula. Any one can be used. It is left to you. They will only say show that these points are collinear. Whichever you feel is easy, you can do by that method. We will do a few more problems. In the next video, I will make one more video. I will continue this in the next video because we have to practice a lot of them. <coughs>